Hey everybody, all right, so last week we checked out the setup of my Bass Kick Instinct drum kit uh, by Mapex. I basically reconfigured the entire drum kit and re-engineered it to have what I like to call bass kicks. So if you want to check that out, check out last week's video. What we're going to look at today is how I capture all of these sounds. So in the last video I spoke about my cymbal choices, the drum shells, and also the configuration of the drum kit as a whole. So today we're going to look at the overheads to start with. And so the overheads, I have the Rode NT5s. So I have two of those. On my right side, I have the Rode microphone pointing towards the floor tom. And it's a bit closer because I like to get a really tight sound on, on the right side with the bell of the ride, as well as with the low frequencies of my two bass kicks and the 14 by 14 inch floor tom. On my left side, I have another road which is pointed towards the hi-hat and it captures a lot of like the washiness of the cymbals as well as the snare drum and speaking of which I don't actually have the snare drum mic'd up and there's a reason for that I like to have these overheads or mainly everybody needs to have the overheads an equidistance apart from the snare drum so as we can see here I have them at 42 inches part pretty much exactly so what this does is that I can have the right side a bit tighter on the right side of the drum kit and the left side a bit higher for the higher frequencies of these cymbals and the toms as well so what this does is it makes sure it makes sure that we have an entire stereo image of the drum kit so I'm gonna hit record and we're gonna see what that those sound like Now we're going to look at the internal microphones that I have by uh, Randall May Innovations. So these internal mics I have inside the toms and they're pointed directly at the center of the drum head. So I actually get a natural gate out of each tom as well as it's pointed at the, the drum head so I get a nice snappy attack. And I kind of tuck these in with the overhead microphone so that I get the full stereo image of the drum kit because I like to look at the drum kit as an instrument and not necessarily dialed in you know like close mics so i like to use the internal mics just kind of tucking it in so i get that attack and they basically speak very well with the stereo image of the Rhodes overhead so if we take a look at the toms i have the 10 inch which has a sennheiser 604 inside as well as my 12 inch on my left side and the 14 by 14 inch floor tom so now moving on to the bass kicks this is where it gets interesting. I have the monorail system and I actually have two ATM 230s inside the bass kick. So the bass drum being 22 by 18 on my right side, I like to use as a gong drum as well as access to the um, batter head so that I still get a 22 by 18 inch kick drum sound. So let's take a look at this. I'm actually able to use what's called a monorail system so I can flow up and down the system with the ATM 230 so that it can be closer or further from the uh, rezo and batter head. So I can actually make them both an equidistance or play around with where I want them positioned. Uh, I have them positioned properly for what I'm looking for right now. So I try not to touch those as much as possible because I do have to take the head off 
and adjust it from there, but it is all manual and um, you get some really unique sounds and you can kind of play around with how it's capturing the drums. So in my 16 by 16 inch floor tom, which is also what I like to coin the bass kick, I have the exact same monorail system with the exact same microphones. So the reason I chose the ATM 230s and Randall May himself suggested that is because with the type of setup I have, it doesn't only catch like the bottom and low end of a kick drum, including a 16 by 16 inch floor tom, which I converted into a stand up kick drum, but it also gets like those high snappy frequencies. And as I bring the rezzo head closer or the batter head closer or further away, I can adjust the snappiness manually as well. So I'm really getting with this entire drum setup a real instrument sound coming through the microphones. So that being said, we're gonna check out what the entire drum kit sounds like with all the microphones in play. So let's go. So I have all of the cables running into my Focusrite Scarlett 18920. And so this is an eight channel input interface and all of my cables are, you know, wrapped nice and neat, labeled just to keep myself organized because I learned the hard way with, you know, rat nests and not really knowing what was plugged in where as I was going along and matching the inputs in logic uh, to correspond with the microphones. So I'm also using the Fender in-ear monitor system. Um, I use these live on tour as well as in my home studio. So as I'm engineering my own sessions, I'm able to uh, hear the click track and also playback of the sounds so that I can ensure everything's being captured properly. So the tools I'm using, it's a very basic setup. Um, and for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with you know, sound recording, I am your average Joe. So. I'm, I basically just use the basics for um, capturing the drum kit. And uh, there's nothing special happening when it comes to uh, the actual mix. As you can see, like I'm using some gates, but nothing is gated too hard. I'm not wiping any frequencies out. Uh, and then I have everything bussed over to their appropriate buses over here um, with some extra compression and uh, yeah, just a tiny bit of EQing. So, Essentially, yeah, it's a very basic setup I have going on. This um, I'm using Logic Pro, as well as a Mac Mini, with uh, you know some additives to it uh, to make it a bit stronger and last a bit longer, especially while recording drums because we have a lot of channels happening simultaneously. And that's essentially I'm I'm using them all, but that's essentially what I need um, for my stereo image drum kit, as well as just tucking in the internal mic. So. Um, even levels, you can see I have the overheads um, panned to the right 25, to the left 25, uh, the kick in the center, uh, the tom, uh, basically the toms I have panned the way that you see the drum kit as well. So this is all from my perspective. All right, so there we have it. Uh, from the last video, you got to see my kit set up with the very unique bass kick uh, set up. And now with this video, we went through how I actually capture all those sounds and my preferred taste in microphones, as well as uh, the internal mics versus the overheads and how they actually work simultaneously and in harmony to capture the product that I've chosen to play with. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, hit that notification button as well. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything I just mentioned today. And I thank you once again for checking this out. Peace.